I am back and as you see I'm in front of my wood lathe and I've got a couple blocks of wood. So I got these out about over three weeks ago with the idea of making something pretty cool. But I kind of got sidelined for a while but I am back now and I'll go ahead and pick up where I left off and I want to turn that. What I'm making is something I saw Captain Eddie do. I save videos when I really like them. This video that I saved is nine years old and Captain Eddie did a Femisphere and I just kept putting it off and I kind of forgot about it and then recently Heather from uh, Spirit Wood Stone and Bones she did one so I decided you know what and I told her hey thanks for the reminder I've been wanting to do one of these so Heather's pretty impressive she's not afraid to try anything so I'll put a link in the description you might want to check her out because she's done one of these and some other takeoffs from that so there's a couple of ways you can glue them together. Uh, you can use a piece of paper, brown brown paper bag and glue, and you can pop it loose. You can use double-sided tape, and usually I see them do it the whole distance. But this is going to get thin and hard to pop loose. So I'm going to do a little bit of, of the uh, tape here, and I won't be using the half inch on the ends. So I'm going to put some wood glue here, about a quarter inch width, and that will hold that quite well, plus this. So I'm going to get it clamped and uh, let it sit for a while and we'll get back out here and start turning it. We're going to try this. So we'll just get a little strip of glue here. That's extra stock when I turn it that'll all get cut off. And I think that's all I really need. And right here. I'm going to clamp this and I think it might be almost lunch time. So I'll come back a little bit later and we'll get this mounted up and see if I can make us a femisphere. Okay, it's been sitting about an hour and a half, so we'll go ahead and get it between centers. It's got a little punch mark there. And here. See what kind of RPM we have. About 1100. Start with my spindle roughing gouge, we'll make it round, and then we'll lay out what we need to do. Let's see what we let's see what we have here. I measured those again before I started cutting, and they were not three and a half; they were more like three and three eighths. And now they're about three and a quarter. So I want to get this running as parallel as I can, and we'll just clean it up. That's real close.
Okay, that's good. Okay, I'm going to get some marks on here. And I'll be back and we will start putting a shape on there. I need to put an inside radius in here, or basically a fillet. And it needs to be pretty exact. So I've made some templates. Uh, this is 1.4275. That's what it calculated out to be. Uh, 1 and 7 16 basically. I'll use this one. It has a little indexing point right there that will sit on top of it over here. And it'll make sure that, well, if this touches down here at the right dimension and that sits up there, I know I have it right. I'll need to put that on this side as well. The center band right here is 3 8 I'll need to step this down to a 3 8 diameter. I'll use my parting tool for that. I'll just cut part way down and we'll start cutting that inside radius. If we go forward it works better. I love how walnut turns. Okay, I think we can go ahead and start. We'll just work our way down, trying to keep a a nice shape and let that radius just develop. And I will use my 3 8 bowl gouge. Okay, I'm going to need to take that down almost to the size I want. So I'm going to go ahead and get this down to the 3 8 right here. We're 0.64 now. Set up some calipers so I can do that a little bit easier. I'm going to make that just a little bit big. It's easier to take a little bit off than to add a little bit back on. down into here and have that radius. That's getting pretty close. Anyone, anybody who's seen me use little templates, I 
I really like using that black crayon there and just rotate it against the wood and it leaves the marks. That's what you have to take off. heavy right there and uh, it wouldn't take much to take too much off of there so I'll probably use this and get a brake scraper to do some blending. Okay I was kind of playing around getting rid of the little black crayon marks and I I think we have it. You can see that template in there is it's perfect. And this length here is exactly what I want. There is extra stock past here and I did that on purpose because like I said earlier I'll be cutting it off around here and then I won't have any glue to deal with. So I think that looks good. Now I gotta do the same thing on that side and readjust these lines to match that diameter. I'd like to be able to flip this around. It is on centers, but uh, I'm not sure if I have enough grip on here. I'm going to look at that and I'll be right back. Well, I did a little sanding on here, then I took a little break, thought about this, and I flipped it around. It ran pretty true, but I just don't know right now. I think I'll do most of the roughing and I might flip it around again if it's running true then I'll do the fine work over here. I went ahead and put the line right there which represents this diameter on the end. We need to cut this down to there eventually but like I did on this side I'll just go halfway down while I take the stock away. I've got my parting tool again. I'm using the same process here where I cut it until a template fits fairly close and then I use that shape as a visual guide so that I can cut it down pretty much proportionally to get it to fit in the right spot. And I got the most of it out of there. Let's see if we can keep ourselves out of trouble and get this flipped around. Hey, that doesn't run, run too bad at all. Alright, let's see if we can get this one to match perfectly. I'm using those templates now for the final fit and I'll tell you what, they are pretty critical in making this work. Okay, let's, uh, let's check this side here and that one was already good and I flipped it around and let's see what we have here. It's uh, it's good, <laughs> very good. All right, it's getting late. We'll just sand this a little bit with uh, 150 grit I have, and I'll do it in reverse. I'll just do a little light sanding just to expose that grain.
what I haven't done is uh, knock these corners over and I want to think about that overnight I don't know if I want a full radius or or just to uh, round the corners over we'll do that tomorrow okay so far so good all right it's the next day I'll go ahead and double check everything again so that fits really good and that fits really good this is the right width which matches the ends so I've decided to go ahead and round this corner and I'll just use this tool that I've ground as a negative rake scraper mostly because I have end grain here I don't want to take any chances of having anything chip out now What I'm using here is a very fine tooth blade and I believe it came off a power hacksaw. I'm putting some denatured alcohol along the joint and hope that it gets in there and soften up the glue on that double sided tape. I think I've got it. I've got this little tool here with a real thin blade on it. I verified there was no glue in here a popsicle stick and I ground it to a feather edge there so I can start it and push it down the middle of that and I already put a little alcohol in it and you can see it's popping loose I think I can just push it down in there actually and then we're loose all right I'm going to clean all of this off and we'll see how well it fits that's well see how that Denatured alcohol is some pretty handy stuff to have around. I'll show you this one more time because after this it's not going to look like what it does right here. I'll rotate one of these 90 degrees and I'll try to show you a little bit but it's kind of hard to hold it. But it's going to be a real odd looking shape. And I can tell you that the profiles match perfect but I'll show you all that once we get it glued together. I was going to make something to hold these pieces so I could clamp them, but I decided I could probably do it with a couple rubber bands. And you can see that looks like it's going to work. So I let it sit all night, let the glue dry really good, and I've got a little strain set up here and it worked fantastic actually. So instead of taking the chuck out and putting the drill chuck into the taper, I just clamped the whole drill chuck in the four jaw chuck and sanded the ends of those up and got them pretty close and was able to just sand the rest with paper like I'm doing there. Used sheets of sandpaper to finish that off and then I sanded everything to 320. Put a coat of sanding sealer on it, sprayed one coat of deaf lacquer, and now I'm going to do one more coat of the deaf lacquer, and I'll let this dry, maybe get another coat on it, and I'll come back and we'll get a close-up examination of what we just made. So I'll see you soon. Alright, it is all done, and what a cool shape this is. See how I get this set up? See how this comes around there and then wraps up like that and then you do the same thing over here and then you come back over there and do the same thing like that. It's just a very cool shape. I like it a lot. This is pretty small. It ends up three and a quarter by three and a quarter in all directions and I left the ends long so I did cut those off and the glue joint that I put on the end that worked out real well. I was able to get this apart with a very, very thin tool, get some uh, denatured alcohol in there and let it sit for a while and it popped right off. So Captain Eddie, in his video, he says one of these is good for tool control and cutting accurately. And he is right about that. So if you don't have good control and you cut too much out of there, it's not going to work. But if you sneak up on it with an accurate template, and that needs to be perfect, 
and it fits against your work where you cannot see any light on both sides, you can have confidence that when you take it apart, you won't have a step in here at all. So it's just cool. It doesn't have a lot of function other than it's kind of fun to hold. I accidentally picked it up like that. It just feels comforting. But I do have another trick that this will do. I need to move the camera and I'll show you that. Got it sitting on this board here and it's just a slight slope. So I might have to... There we go. I don't want it falling off. Pretty cool, huh? We'll do it one more time. Well, that was pretty cool watching this tumble its way down that board. And it kind of rolls and tumbles at the same time. It's kind of fascinating. Such a cool shape, too. So, another special thanks to Captain Eddie for doing that video nine years ago and inspiring me to want to do this, even though I set the idea aside for many years. So, another special thanks to Heather for doing one about a month ago. And this pretty much told me, okay, you got to do this before you forget again. So, I had a lot of fun making this, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor. Click that like button and feel free to leave a comment. Both of those things will really help my channel grow. I do lots of different types of turnings and you never know what might be next. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And a special thanks to all my current subscribers. You really mean a lot to me. So till the next time, see you later.